We're going to take it around the table here, but first, uh, Kimberly, there's been some breaking news today. In Missouri, authorities are investigating uh, a, a situation when a police officer was shot during a traffic stop on Friday. This mm -hmm. is in West St. Louis County and also in Georgia today. Authorities uh, say that a man opened fire on a police officer in Valdosta. Uh, that was Friday morning. The man reportedly called 911 to report a break-in, and then when the officers arrived, yeah. he ambushed them and shot them. Both of those officers are expected to survive, but... It does feel like there's some sort of coordination or sort of loose coordination happening. Of course, when you see something like this happening, it does inspire others to be able to act and act out in horrible and violent ways. But this is part of the divisiveness that's going on that we've heard, um, you know, throughout even this election season and what we've been seeing going on with respect to the Department of Justice and the, uh, you know, really upsetting to me in the way that police officers have been demonized. And having worked very closely for many years with police officers in the San Francisco DA's office, Los Angeles DA's office, accompanying them in high crime and gang areas on uh, ride-alongs, you just see the nature of how difficult and dangerous their jobs are, responding to domestic violence cases, uh, going into those areas that no one else would even want to drive down the street or walk down the street. You couldn't pay them money to do it because of the level of dangerousness and it's just it's sad because uh, they haven't been getting the respect and the support that they deserve and that's why I really hope and I echo the sentiments of the chief there in Dallas that people respect and honor law enforcement throughout the country because uh, they do an incredible job putting their life on the line every day and they've lost some of the finest uh, just in the last you know, 24 hours. Juan, um, I'm glad to have you here. You were going to have the day off today and you came back to be with us and I'm glad. It was sad to hear uh, the chief, David Brown, saying that they don't feel support on most days. Um, mm -hmm. That was uh, surprising. It was a tragic day all around and also very troubling, and we're glad to have you here for your thoughts. Well, I think the Dallas police in specific don't feel that support, but it's odd because they have done a good job, in fact, in terms of community relations and been a model for other police forces that have been trying to reach out and oftentimes following dictates from justice and other federal agencies about how you build relationships with troubled communities. So I, it feels unfair to me a little bit that the Dallas police had to suffer this horror, this trauma. Um, and generally, though, I just, I mean, you know, this has been such a difficult week with the shootings of the two black men, one in Minnesota, the other in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I think even last night as I was leaving the studio, there were marches here in New York City, marches in Chicago, LA, several other cities, uh, sort of reviving the Black Lives Matter theme because there's so much upset right now about uh, excessive use of force by police. And I think we've seen that in terms of statistics, uh, questions about, you know, who gets killed and why they get killed and the fear, the very real fear that exists in the black community, especially for young black men. So we have at this moment, Dana, I think a real divide. And it's not that anybody, including Black Lives Matters, has any sympathy for this man who perpetrated this terror. I mean, the people who were marching in Dallas last night, they were running and fleeing. They had no, they were in fact more close to the cops than they were to this uh, madman who was shooting at the cops. Uh, it's a different, it's, it's just one of these things though that in this environment, it's so politically incendiary and it sort of invites everybody uh, to run and say, oh, I'm with these guys or I'm with that guys, instead of saying we're Americans. Uh, Greg, apparently information just coming in from the police that have searched um, the gunman's home and found bomb material and other um, sort of weapons and maybe he was planning a larger attack or at least had some sort of an indication that there was some coordination. Yeah, I mean, isn't, that, isn't this kind of what we've all been working for? Like, you know, in the past three to four years, the hysteria over race, the hysteria over identity, the, the specials on other cable channels about race, uh, the romanticizing of agitation coming from Occupy Wall Street to Black Lives Matter. Is it any surprise that this will culminate in actions like these? The protest organizer, Jeff Hood, stated that when he saw it, police, he was shocked when he saw police running in the direction of the bullets. And he said that it wasn't lost on him. And I thought that was really nice that he said that. But we, as Americans, don't need to see police die in order to understand their sacrifice. Right. You know, this is a job where you die. You know, this is, these are, you're not a talk show host. You're not a blogger. You're not a community organizer. You're not a sitcom actor. And yet those are all the people on Twitter who are giving their hot takes about this. Meanwhile, it's these guys that are mocked daily who have to go out there and stand and protect people who are trying to loot a 7-Eleven. 
happened. After this happened, there were people dancing in the streets trying to loot a 7-Eleven. And the cops stood there and, and did their jobs no matter what. There needs to be, and I said this a long time ago after the, sh the shootings in Brooklyn, a PLM movement. You know, we, it's, it's, on, uh, it's actually on us, the complacency of the American public and the ambivalence about going out and, and protesting about the people who do the right things. And we don't do that because we are so successful and life is so good and violence is down. So we don't think about it. That's why you have agitation taking taking on, on all channels, and we forget about the people who protect us. It's an outrage. Tucker, well, you've been watching this all day. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everything you said except one point. The police didn't do their jobs as the crowd looted the 7-Eleven, as they didn't in Ferguson, as they didn't in Baltimore. You mean they stood? That's exactly right. They, they stood as disorder spread, as chaos spread. The whole point of having a police department, investing all this authority in these guys, is that they keep the peace and they keep civilization from crumbling. And increasingly they're not, because they're under pressure from political leaders not to, who are demagogues and liars who tell only part of the story. Now, let me just say, point blank, there are bad cops. I've dealt with them. People who abuse their authority, people with authority tend to abuse it. That's why you keep a close watch on them. But to say that the cops are racist, as the mm. president has said again and again from the beginning of his first term, actually, with the Skip Gates story, creates an environment where something like this is absolutely inevitable. He tells only half the story. Yes, minority communities are disproportionately caught up in the justice system, and there's probably some unfairness there. But they also have terrible crime rates, actually. And nobody ever says that. And that's, that's, the, that's the central fact for police officers patrolling these neighborhoods. They're terrified. And so to leave that part out of it, and by the way, what do you think the people, the normal people who live in those neighborhoods, what do you think they think? They're terrified too. The president never mentions that. No political figure ever mentions that. They act as if this just is randomly happening to people of color, and that's a lie, and it makes the environment worse, more yeah. bitter, and divided. It's one of the reasons race relations are so It's just narrative. not true, it because true. I heard President Obama just today <laughs> say... Today. This is a, an abomination that will not stand. Justice will be done. Whoever perpetrated this act against the police will be captured, and there's no excuse for it. That's what I heard from the no, president. But what he said yesterday was statistics show that young black men are yes. much more likely to be caught up in the criminal justice system, and that is racism. What he didn't say yeah. was that young black men are much more likely to perpetrate crimes. They're not attacking anyone. I'm just saying that's what the Justice Department stats say. I happen to know them. I wrote a yes. book on it once. Right. And but it's real, and he never says that. So he acts like the whole thing is racism. He doesn't acknowledge no, it. No, that what you have to understand is even if you have a situation, and I say this to you as a strong conservative, even if you have a situation where someone might say, oh, well, blacks or Hispanics perpetrate more crimes, it doesn't then say, oh, therefore, the people we invest with authority, the people that we give the power to kill, people we hand the gun yes. and the jailing authority to, are allowed, therefore, to treat these people in an inhumane way. I agree completely. I, but, oh, by okay. the way, let me just be really clear. I agree with you 100%. I think there is abuse. Again, I've seen it. Right, okay. And I think we should come down on it like a ton of bricks. But to say that all bad interactions between cops and the minority community are a result of racism is just not true. No, but just, wait, can I, can I just point that this... Ha this has, in my view, less to do with, with uh, President Obama and, th and that debate than it is for a greater debate in the mentality of the country and the fact that we used to be we the people and now we're us versus them. And I don't think it's just, it didn't start with Obama. It started it, with the early 70s, the past 50 years. We have moved away from the idea of a single unity to a, con a congregation of separate identities and grievances. And we've ginned up, we've ginned up this polarization on cable. And what has happened as well is you're seeing a country that is disconnected from the external global threats like terror. We cannot even talk about terror. So what's left? We have ourselves. And we turn on ourselves. And you're seeing groups of people turning on themselves, turning on law enforcement, turning on different ethnic, ethnicities, because we once looked outward. We once looked outward as a country at what even 9-11 was 15 years ago, and we've already lost sight of that. We don't even talk about, we can't even say Islamic terror, but we can easily say the NRA, you know, or we could say Christians. We've lost the ability to look outward and we are now destroying ourselves.